Hey guys, welcome back to, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Today we're going to be installing a power inlet box for a generator, a 30 amp uh, circuit to power our house in the event that the power goes out. For those of you who are wondering why you would want to do that, I suggest you just turn on the news, pay attention to some of the things going on in the world. It makes a lot of sense, especially right now, to be able to take yourself off grid if you need to and have the tools and, and everything set up to do that, and so that's what I'm going to be doing today. Please excuse the, the paint. The, it's number one, it's pollen season. That yellow stuff gets on the, the dark green paint and it looks horrible. Number two, we're about to repaint this house, so it's bleh. But anyway, to this project, I don't know what I'm doing. I am not an electrician. I'm sure there's going to be a hundred or so electricians that comment negatively down below. I consider that constructive feedback, so go ahead and, and leave your comments if I do a horrible job. Um, this is going to be a tight little corner here because I don't want to go over the other conduits that are in place. Um, different contractors have done different things over the years and it looks... Well, there's, it looks like there's a lot going on. So I don't want to disturb any of that. So what I'm actually going to do is just kind of run some conduit and put the power inlet box right here next to all this stuff, just off to the side. That way you can plug into it and have have a gas power generator out in the yard or you know whatever it is you want to do but um, this is going to be a fun little project and let's get started on it for this project obviously you need your inlet box i'm using a reliance control inlet box had decent reviews on amazon i don't know you know whether it's the perfect one or not but it seems like a fairly nice box. You're gonna need whatever you're gonna to have to have for conduit. You need 10-3 wire. 10-3 is to properly wire this. Don't try and do it off 10-2. Well, you're gonna need a double 30 amp breaker for that, uh, for that inlet box. And then you, you don't have to do this, but it would be better to do it. It's to code, it's for safety. I wouldn't rely on other people to be as smart as you are. You'll need one of these. Basically what this is, is it's a switch that goes on and you can find one for your breaker box online. But it's a switch so that the main power has to be turned off in order to turn on the breaker that controls that. And the reason for that is because if the power goes out and you just simply hook up your generator and turn it on and they come out to work on lines, you can electrocute a worker because you're back feeding into the power grid. You could electrocute a neighbor. Um, and he, just simple fact that you're back feeding into the power grid, I mean, you're sending other people power. Uh, what you want to, what you should be doing is turning that breaker off, the main breaker, um, the service breaker. And then uh, this switch will make it so that the, the inlet box only can be utilized when that breaker is turned off. And I'll show you how this works. But, um, and another issue is you don't want power back feeding into your generator or you know whatever it is device you're using. We're gonna be using uh, battery inverters. You could blow them up. I mean, you could have some serious issues. So it is extremely important that that main breaker is off at any time you're using a generator in, in your inlet service box. And so, get one of these they're only 20 bucks it's it's not that difficult to install we'll do it right now okay so before you begin first thing you should do is oh hit that main breaker and turn it off because well you we don't want anything bad to happen to you i'm also switching out my boots to rubber boots i don't know if it's a myth or not but if something were to happen um i in theory, the rubber would help keep the current from going through my body into the ground and electrocuting me. Okay, so before I take this off, I'm just gonna mess around with that little switch I was talking about, make sure I've got that all lined up. In theory, this will be able to slide up when that is off and allow me to turn these breakers on. And when that breaker's on, and this will be over and those breakers will not be able to be pushed over. So that works. I don't think we're gonna have a problem with that. The question is where to install it on here. 
I'm gonna get a Sharpie and mark it. Okay, I don't know if you could see this, but I have the holes marked that I need marked for the, um, the little switch. Now, take this off. Now, it's really, really, really important to remember that this is a hot, this is hot up there. Very, very hot. I'm gonna play it safe and just not mess with a whole lot of stuff while I'm in here. I actually need this to be where my double 30 amp breaker goes. So I need to pull those out. And relocate them to a new home. Watch the screwdriver in there. <laughs> Seriously. Okay. Okay. Now yeah, that's gonna be fun. That's... I want to try and even this out as much as possible. I don't want everything just hanging out on one side of my breaker box. So I'm just going to kind of flip this around and make its new home. I'm actually going to go ahead and leave this one on this side, just lower it. So on my cover, I will just remove two more spots for those things right there. Okay, so I went ahead and kind of pre-built this. Uh, this is, yeah, this is my conduit with my switch. And I did this because, uh, well, it's just easier to have it kind of pre-put together like this. I still need to glue the conduit together, but at least with the wire brought through it, it I feel like it's just gonna be a little easier to work with. I've made my little hole at the bottom. I'm gonna slide my wire on through. Ooh, don't go up there. And now get that in place. At this point, I have my conduit set up. I have the wire that's gonna go into the breakers here and the wire that's gonna go into the actual inlet box pulled off to the side here. So let's go ahead and do the wires in the box first, just to get them out of my way. Um, basically what you're gonna wanna do is strip back the Romex casing. All right. Voila. Now the black and the red, those are gonna be your hots. So they're gonna go onto the actual breaker itself. The ground and the white will go on the ground bar to the right. This is a main panel. So there's not separate bars for the ground and the white. Okay, now I'm gonna find a spot for my white. I think I wanna bring that right about there. Now for my breaker. This is our breaker that will be for the power inlet box. My black, my red running down. I've got my new ground back in there. You can kind of see, I think the, the super shiny is the new ground. And then the super white, which you may or may not be able to see back in there is the new neutral. So like I said, because this is a main uh, panel, my neutrals and grounds are all on the same bar. This interlock kit comes with its own drill bit to make it easy for you to know exactly the size hole you need. And I'm going to drill the holes they marked earlier. Getting closer to being done here, 
Um, basically, what you can see now is that the, the interlock is on. In order for me to turn on the breaker for the inlet from the, the generator, I have to slide this up. Um, I cannot have the main on and be able to turn this on. So the interlock is kind of an important little piece to this whole puzzle to keep people from being able to turn the generator on when the main is on. You have to disconnect the main and slide this up and turn that on. All right, now I just have to finish doing my inlet box and I can go ahead and close this. I'm gonna leave the power off just while I finish this last step because even I did something wrong, I don't want to fry myself. All right, so there you have it. We've got our power inlet box attached to the house. You just take your cable that runs to your generator, line it up, see it should line up this way. Boom. And now you can run power to your house during a power outage or just to get off the grid if you wanted to. I'm going to go ahead and turn the power back on. This is off, has to be off. And as you can see, I cannot push up my interlock to turn this breaker on as long as this is powered on. So I'd have to turn this off to be able to even lift this and put this on.